Today, the city of Scranton will exit Act 47, a city in financial distress, after 30 years. Recorded live at Lackawanna College Theatre, January 25, 2022, at 1 p.m. on Comcast Channel 19 and ECTV's YouTube channel. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I'm Eileen Cipriani. I'm the Director of Community Development for the City of Scranton, and it's my pleasure to welcome welcome everyone here this afternoon. A uh, special thank you to President Jill Murray and Lackawanna College for hosting us here this afternoon. And, and a very special welcome to all of you because everyone here in this room had a part, whether it was a small part or a large part, in helping the city exit from Act 47 distress status. So congratulations to everyone. It was quite an achievement. And at this time, I'll call up the Honorable Secretary Dennis Davin, Secretary of the Department of Community and Economic Development for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Eileen. I really appreciate uh, being here, being invited to, uh, to this, uh, this great event. It's also uh, an honor for me uh, to see an old colleague, uh, I shouldn't say old, a very young colleague, but uh, I've known him for a while, Fred Redding. Uh, where's Fred? Right there. So Fred retired a few years ago. Give him a, a round of applause if you don't mind. Fred did exceptional work for the, uh, for the department and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and we really do miss him, but uh, not that much because we have a really good team now too. So we're, we're in good shape. But uh, it, is, it is my honor and privilege uh, to be here today celebrating a day that marks an exciting turning point in Scranton's future. It was exactly 30 years ago, think about that, 30 years ago this month that Scranton was originally designated financially distressed under the municipality's Financial Recovery Act, or as we commonly call it, Act 47. Um, Scranton entered Act 47 on January 10th, 1992. And can anybody guess who was president then? George H.W., right. George H.W. Bush was president. So for 30 years, despite this vibrant culture and hardworking families that live here, you've been uh, financially struggling with debt and regular budget deficits. And while Act 47 provides critical assistance for distressed municipalities, the designation of being an Act 47 community isn't something anybody wants. It means an investment is less attractive. It means businesses are less likely to set up shop and families are less likely to move or raise a family there. But through it all, you stayed strong. Scranton stayed strong. There's no doubt there have been bumps along the way and current leaders had to make difficult but necessary choices over the past couple of years, and that is felt every single community that's in Act 47, and especially the communities that come out of Act 47, that is something that they, that they live through every single day. Um, but choices that, uh, they may not have been popular for everyone, but they were needed to reduce the city's debt burden and turn their budget picture around. That's not something any leader likes to do. So it speaks to the ability of the folks like Merritt Cognetti, uh, and members of city council that they were able to come together and create policies that have led to budget surpluses, reductions in debt, and put Scranton on a path to long-term fiscal stability. This is a very special day in Scranton's long and storied history. In fact, this is just the 16th municipality to exit Act 47 over the past 30 years. 16 have, uh, have exited. Uh, Scranton's one of them. We're proud of that. Seven of those exits have occurred during the Wolf administration. This administration, we're very, very proud of that. And we'll continue to support Act 47 communities to make sure that they have the resources they need to continue to improve their financial conditions. And it's not just the Act 47 communities, uh, it's the communities that come out of Act 47. Because the one thing that we wanna do is we wanna be there to be able to provide the resources that you need to continue the momentum that you've, that you've started. Today's about Scranton. It's about the residents, the businesses, the community leaders, the government officials who have been here for some or all of these past 30 years who never gave up on their electric city. They've never stopped fighting for a vision of Scranton that included a vibrant and safe downtown, neighborhoods where families could raise children and their children's children, a place that embraced its history while always looking ahead to a bright future. Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, the city stayed resilient. And with today's exit from Act 47, Scranton will take another monumental step toward that future. And I'd be, remiss, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a few additional folks who have played such a large part in making this day a reality. So our team at DCED, and we have a lot of them here today, but Deputy Secretary Rick Vallella, where's Rick? Rick's right there. Kim Bracey, former mayor Kim Bracey. Rick and Kim are both former mayors. Uh, Kim thinks she was the better mayor. Rick thinks he was the better mayor. 
I'll leave it up to the people in their uh, particular districts. Andrew Sheaf, where's Andrew? Andrew, Andrew did a lot of work, and thanks, Andrew, for being here. Paul McNosky and Jim Rose, where's Jim? Jim over there, thank you so much. Uh, and really all the folks in our department that have supported uh, Act 47 and the Act 47 program. Representatives Cal Mullins, Tom Welby, and Senator Marty Flynn, they have been tireless advocates for this city, uh, uh, both here in Scranton and back in Harrisburg. As a matter of fact, uh, Marty Flynn actually grabbed me one time in Harrisburg, made me come out to Scranton a couple of months ago to see what's going on and, and to tell him exactly what, uh, what he needed. So we appreciate that. Uh, in addition to congratulating Mayor Cognetti and her team, as well as the members of the City Council, I also want to recognize Gerald Cross. Gerald is where? Gerald. Oh, sorry. There had Gerald. Uh, you'll hear from Gerald shortly. Gerald, Jerry's the senior fellow of the uh, Pennsylvania Economy League who served as a recovery coordinator. But as I mentioned earlier, this day doesn't belong to us government officials. Uh, <clears throat> it belongs to the city. It belongs to the families and businesses and community groups that call Scranton home. This is your day. And I encourage everyone here at this event and everyone living in Scranton to celebrate today, but to also use it as a springboard to keep Scranton moving forward. This city is one of Pennsylvania's largest, as you know. It's one of our most historic. It also happens to be part of the national cultural conversation, thanks to certain television shows and a certain U.S. president. But most importantly, it's one of the that now has true. It's a city that now has true momentum. So harness that momentum to keep attracting new residents and businesses. Keep making Scranton a better place to live, work, and play. And know that we here at DCED uh, will continue to support you every step of the way. If you ever need assistance, we're only a phone call away. So I'm much lo looking forward to signing the official order, releasing Scranton from Act 47, which we'll do just in a few minutes. Thanks again for having me here today. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. At this time, I'd like to invite to the podium Council President Kyle Donahue. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, I'd like to just first start off by thanking Secretary Davin for being with us today. Um, I also want to thank Jerry Cross for the work he's done uh, to get us to this point. And I also want to thank uh, Mayor Cognetti for giving me the opportunity to say a few words uh, here today. It's been 30 years since the city of Scranton was declared financially distressed under Act 47. Uh, I often hear people ask if we were better off today than we were 30 years ago. And as much as I would like to answer yes to that question, I know that question cannot be answered in simple black and white terms. Uh, the answer is more complicated than that. City government has made its fair share of mistakes over the past 30 years. Some of those mistakes were self-inflicted. Most notable was allowing the park, parking authority to default in 2012. Some of those mistakes were also unavoidable uh, since municipalities in Pennsylvania operate under a set of convoluted and outdated state laws that limit, that limit our options to how we grow our revenue to keep up with our increasing expenditures. But in spite of those constraints, I believe there are two people who were instrumental in getting the city into the financial position we are in today. Uh, they are former Council President Bob McGough and then former Business Administrator Dave Bozzoni, who's here with us today. Bob brought integrity, decorum, and respect, not only into council meetings, meetings that could be best described as a circus before he took over, but also in a way that council and the administration interact and work, work together for the betterment, betterment of city residents. Bob knew that the only way the city could improve its finances was if council and the administration were willing to work together in a respectful and, and constructive manner. I also have to thank uh, former council presidents Joe Weschler, who's here with us today, uh, Pat Rogan, and Bill Gaughan for continuing on with Bob's legacy. Dave brought immense knowledge in financial markets and municipal finance to city government. More importantly, he respected council's legislative role and, always, and was always willing to work alongside council to work through any issues or questions any council member may have had to make sure the initiatives that were being proposed actually became a reality. I cannot definitely say we are better off than we were 30 years ago, but I can say that we are in a better position now to serve the needs of city residents and to once again become a great American city. As we move forward post Act 47, City Council is committed to working with Mayor Cognetti con to continue to modernize city government while keeping both legacy and operating costs under control. We are committed to investing in our neighborhoods 
in our park system, and in our infrastructure to improve the quality of life of city residents. And we must continue to explore ways to improve city services without overburdening our taxpayers in order to continue moving Scranton into the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. At this time, I'd like to invite to the podium Senior Fellow from the Pennsylvania Economy League, Gerald Cross. Thank you, Eileen. Um, I, I'd like to start today by thanking uh, Secretary Davin, De uh, Deputy Secretary Villalo, Executive Director Kim Bracey, Mayor Cognetti, Council President Donahue, and everyone here for being part of this event and being part of Scranton's history. And be on behalf of the entire coordinator team at PEL, and it was a team, uh, it was a team going back three decades, I want to thank DCED for their support, their perseverance, and the generosity of resources the Commonwealth has provided to the city over the past 30 years. And also from the team, the PEL team, I'd like to thank specifically people from the city. You all know who you are, and friend and foe alike, I enjoyed working with you. But in particular, I'd like to thank Dave Bolzoni, former BA, and Evan Weiss, formerly of HJA Strategies. I believe they're both here today. When you look back to when Act 47 started, it was Scranton of 1992. That would be familiar, I think, to a person that came here from 1962. At least it would be familiar to that person prior to the Lackawanna Avenue implosion, if you all remember that. But think back that 1962 and 1992 in the Scranton City's culture was not that different. But I really don't think that the 2022 version of Scranton would be at all familiar to that time traveler from 1992. Today, Scranton and Scranton's future are the product of a new generation of civic and elected leaders I was proud to work with and honored to work with. They were dedicated to overcoming their differences and working together. The Scranton of 2022 is now keeping pace with, if, not, it is not, if it's not actually leading, developments in the outside world. That wasn't always the case. Scranton resisted change while the outside world moved on. And that will increase the city's re relevance to the region, northeastern Pennsylvania, I dare say the nation, as a result. I do know that the 30 years that Scranton was in Act 47 was a multi-generational event. And hopefully we had some difficult, sometimes enlightening experiences that occurred since 1992. I hope they could be handed down as a shared civic memory to inform future generations of Scranton's leaders as to what was handed to them and what events went through the leadership of the past 30 years. I believe that will happen. I believe that's the case. And that today Scranton's citizens and their elected leaders will, sh will see their fates as shared with the citizens as an intertwined fate. And they will know that their decisions made for the greater good of the city can both be a, gen a sacrifice at the current time but also a gift to future generations if it provides and sustains their posterity. I believe, I really believe, Scranton has a bright future ahead of it. The city's strong character, it's a real strong character, trust me, it's strong, should enable it to make the most difficult but the necessary decisions so that the city remains vibrant, remains healthy, and number one, remains sustainable for many, many years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. And at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Mayor Paige Cognetti. All right, thank you, Eileen. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It is wonderful to be in person. It's a bit sparse in here, which is absolutely perfect. And I, there are certainly people that we would have wanted to invite, but there was just a limit to how many people we wanted in this room. Um, it really is a day for everyone in Scranton, for people who live here now, for our kids who are growing up, who to Jerry's point need to know these stories, and we're grateful to the Scranton Times. Uh, Jim, the coverage in the last few days has been really wonderful, and it, I think that speaks to, to Jerry's point about keeping this alive. Um, 
but it, it really is a day for the whole city. But the people in this room, you all have given your all. Um, we even have mayors here who predate Act 47. Mayor Peters is here. Uh, Mayor Wenzel was not able to attend. Mayor Connors is here there, obviously, from the beginning. Mayor Doherty was not able to be here, but Mayor Evans is here. So really appreciate everyone coming together. Scranton really is a family. There are ups and downs just like any family, but this is a Scranton story of resiliency. It's a Scranton story of punching above our weight. It's a Scranton story of adding to our family, uh, to those in Pell and DCED who have been here uh, from the beginning. Uh, folks like Evan Weiss, who you know, doesn't have to be here today, but is because we know you love Scranton too. So this, this city lives an imprint on people, and the fact that we are here after 30 years with all of you in this room and with lots of people cheering us on, not just in the city, but outside of our simi city limits, um, really speaks to that. Um, you know, each, each administration in these 30 years has had its, its share um, of unpredictable things that have happened, either as a, a word that I think uh, Councilman Donahue and I are both going to use, some self-inflicted. Uh, there were things that, that didn't have to happen, but that's why we need to continue to tell this story. And there's things that have happened to us. Uh, in our case here in the last couple of years, the pandemic was a, a, a real broadside, right? None of us expected that to happen. We appreciate DCED, Mayor Bracey, Mayor Bellello, um, Secretary Davin, Jerry, for helping us during the pandemic to not get the boot from Act 47 while we didn't know what was happening. Uh, Pat Sheridan's in the audience. He was our, our BA at the time and had taken the, the reins from Dave Bolzoni and um, it was a very, very difficult time. So we appreciated being able to stay in this status. Nobody you know, wants to have to go to the Commonwealth and say, can we please stay distressed? That's an odd request to make, but it, you know, the, times, the times called for that and we appreciated that, that flexibility. Um, so that was, I'd say that was kind of our bump in the road. But despite that, you know, our team did an incredible job, but we were building on the work of others. We were building on uh, administrations and again, under, under Mr. Bolzoni's leadership in the previous, administ previous administration, we were set on a course where we were able to navigate the pandemic and um, we sleep at night, I sleep at night, uh, knowing that we have cash on hand for an emergency, which isn't, hasn't always been the case. Um, Mr. Cross and I sat down virtually a few weeks ago to go through the 30 years. I wanted to have the full context as we prepared for today. And that idea of me being able to hit the pillow knowing that, say, a pandemic wouldn't break us is certainly not a luxury that everyone has had. So none of this is lost on me. It's not lost on our current team. I don't think it's lost on, on our city council members. Um, we really are grateful to be here. We're grateful for all of the work that has come before us and we bear the responsibility for carrying it on and not carrying it on alone, right? This moment seeing all of you here, we know we're not alone. We know that if we hit the next bump in the road that we have resources um, and we have, we have guidance uh, at our fingertips and we are, we are deeply grateful for that. Um, I want to make sure that we've we've acknowledged every and I can't see everyone because the the lights the lighting's kind of tough but I wanted to to do what I can here um, so I'm very grateful um, I think that Superintendent McTiernan and Recovery Officer Finan are here thank you Pat Laffey I see you uh, Katie Gill Martin Tara was Tara Board President able to make it I don't see her but I think Ty Holmes is here as well um, we are so grateful and I'll again speak for, for Councilmember Donahue who's been right, right with us as we've been working on the tax policy working group and among other efforts. We're so grateful for our working relationship with the school district. None of this means anything if you aren't also successful. So the fact that we are one team is, is really important and I'm so glad to see you here today. Thank you. Um, I wanted to also recognize that, um, so we have, you know, Evan is here and um, we're very happy for Evan's help. Someday, someday, you're coming to Scranton. It's gonna happen. It's, it might be in 30 years, I don't know, but we're gonna make it happen. Um, but I wanted to thank the funders um, that helped bring you and, and Henry Amoroso on. Bob Durkin with the Scranton Chamber is here. Jill Murray, Lackawanna College. Um, I, I don't think that attorney Bill Conaboy from Allied was able to make it today, but we invited him. Um, those, those things, those, those dollars, those yeses uh, that come along the way, you know, Dr. Murray, I'm not sure when, when you and Mark Volk got that request, when you said yes, I'm not sure you knew how absolutely transformative that would be, but here we are today, and it's, it's a team effort, like I said. Uh, and I wanted to thank our, our current city team. Um, 
the last couple of years have been, again, a build on what we've, what we've had before us, but we, we really have made some really big strides despite the headwinds from, from the pandemic. Um, in large part to the hard work of our treasurer, Mary Jo Sheridan, we've implemented new internal controls, we've improved processes and transparency, and we've set up an uh, internal whistleblower hotline, which might, the, inter the internal whistleblower hotline might seem okay, a little bit bland, but when you, you think back to, to prior years, there is a place for somebody to call if there's something that they're worried about. There are, again, these small things that when you first hear about them or read them in the paper, you might not think are much, but they add up to a great amount of internal control and stability for the city. Uh, through the hard work of Solicitor Jessica Eskra and the guidance of our financial advisor, PFM, we have worked hard to pass investment and fund balance policies, and we're working on a debt policy proposal. When Mr. Cross and I sat down a few weeks ago, he remarked that if you'd told him 10 years ago that the city would have passed a fund balance policy, he would have fallen off his chair or, or some similar analogy. Um, through our tax policy working group, which has been led uh, by Carl Dealey and Larry West, um, Kyle Dunahue has been a huge part of that. We have taken the, the bold step of implementing the payroll preparation tax. This year is going to be a ride with that. It's not going to be perfect, but it's been something that we have committed to. We're grateful for the opportunity. As uh, Councilman Donahue said, there are state limitations. There are state statutes that limit our ability to grow our revenues. We had to take this opportunity and we'll be working hard to make sure that the implementation is as smooth as possible. Um, None of this would be possible without Becky McMullen, who was, has been here through administrations and helped us stay steady through everything, especially the pandemic, which had so many question marks. Um, so Becky, we're grateful to you. And Eileen, who has taken the lead on so many things, um, but namely right now, um, figuring out how we're going to best utilize the $68 million in American Rescue Plan funding that we worked very, very hard to advocate for over the last 18 months. That is a, a tremendous piece of how we are going to chart this course of financial stability. Um, I also am very, very excited for this new term that we have. We have a city controller in John Murray who's a very experienced manager in Kathy Wexler as tax collector. And I, I don't think I see Kathy, but maybe she's, there she is. The black mask and black sweater. It's <laughs> we, have, we are so excited to work with you in the single tax office and along with City Council, who, as uh, Mr. John Hughes said, is absolutely committed to improving quality of life and maintaining this financially stable path. We have, we have the right team. Um, new Council Member King is here. Our other Council Members, McAndrew, Schuster, and Rothschild, are at work right now um, for their day jobs. But we really have an incredible team here, and we're, we're very excited to get to work. So thank you all for loving this city so much, for working so hard for us to get to where we are, and we look forward to sticking together through thick and thin in the future. And uh, with that, I have something for Mr. Cross. So Mr. Cross, if you would come here, please. I know that you're not one for fanfare, but <laughs> after 30 years and after how much hair you've lost and how it's changed color in the pictures I saw. Um, it is my honor to present to you a key to the city of Scranton. Aww. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Don't look away. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It, it's overwhelming to think what, what, what the work that went into this recognition to the PEL team. It, it's heartfully appreciated. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Wayne, and thank you, Joel, and thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. At, at this time, Secretary Davin will head over to the table and sign the official declaration exiting the city from Act 47. If anyone from the media would like to come up and onto the stage and take a, a better photo, please, you're welcome.
this time, we'll take questions for any of the principals on stage. We have, if you have a question, if you'd like to, please come to the front of the room. We do have a microphone. Any questions? Okay. 